Hey ADF fans, let's talk about data flows. What are data flows? Do a quick overview here in this video for you of Azure Data Factory's data flows. Before I do, I think it would help to have an overview uh, explanation of Data Factory and the different components and personas for Data Factory. So let's work top to bottom in the slide. So at the top, the personas that typically come in to use Data Factory are going to be data engineers, data scientists, system integrators, essentially folks who perform ETL jobs with their cloud-based data. Now besides cloud-based data, Data Factory can also talk to, besides Azure, other clouds, but also on-premises data. So let's work down to the left-hand side, the silo on the left-hand side. Now we can bring data in from on-premises, from multiple clouds, from many different systems, and then ingest that through what's known as the copy activity. So the copy activity is your data ingestion piece of the Data Factory tool. And then if you work from ingestion over to the right, that's where you get into data flows. This is what we're going to talk about today. Data flows are the code free part of transformation at the top of that middle block. The bottom part is code centric. For those of you who um, like to write code for your data transformation, you would use then the native activities within Data Factory. They use external compute engines for that transformation using your own code. All right, so this video is not going to talk about the other areas of Data Factory that are covered by the orchestration, monitoring, landing data and visualizing it. Instead, let's talk now about an overview for data flows. Okay, so now data flows then are that code free data transformation capability within Azure Data Factory. So you design a graph that you see on the screen on the right hand side in this slide. This graph is your logical intent for how you want to transform your data at scale in the cloud. Data Factory will execute that logic against Apache Spark. And so the details of that Spark engine and managing that environment are all handled for you from Data Factory. You just worry about the logical intent and the business processes that you want to define for your ETL in a data flow. And then in that way, that logical graph that you see on the screen becomes your ETL pattern. So if you remember on a previous slide, I talked about the difference between code free and code centric and Data Factory's data flows allows you to design graphs of your ETL processes as opposed to writing the code on the right hand side being essentially a generic sort of code block for performing the sort of data transformations that can be managed and built in modules and in graphs through data flows and then executed in a serverless manner without you needing to understand the intricacies of Spark or managing versions of Spark in, in managing a cluster that is handled for you with data flows. So the way this works, I've laid out in three essential basic steps going left down to the bottom right. You design your graph of your intents of what you want to do, essentially modeling your business ETL process. That's in the UI designer for Data Factory's data flows. Behind that is a script. So the script can be manually edited and can be will be sent then to the Spark engine for execution and optimized using the executor that we execute, uh, Data Factory executes for you on your behalf. That script is managed and built also by the UI and then will be executed against the Spark cluster where Data Factory manages the cluster environments and the job execution and then presents back to you a execution plan of that job execution on the bottom right. You can see that you'll be able to see the partitioning of the data, how long each step took within the stages of your execution. You'll know how many columns and rows were transformed and how many were dropped and created. And the lineage of those columns and properties are presented to you as well. All right, so let's go over to my Data Factory uh, browser UI. Let's see how all this manifests within a pipeline. So the pipeline is the central point within Data Factory where you will build the different activities that perform actions on your data. So let's start by building a new pipeline. Now the first thing I wanna do is maybe grab some data and ingest some data into the lake. Very common patterns. Let's go ahead and add a copy activity onto my design surface. What I'll do is I'll take some data from a database in this case. Let's go ahead and bring up one of my SQL tables. Now what I'm going to do is just take that data. I'm going to drop that into a, uh, we'll use the blob storage in this case. So I'll set up blob, let's just call it folder. I have a data set called folder. There we go. So what this action does, this activity will move data around within the Azure fabric. Now I want to transform the data. I want to perform some intricate 
uh, complex transformations on the data. I want to get deep and rich with the different uh, columns, uh, the different properties, the rows. I want to aggregate, summarize some data, perform some analytics on it. So what I'll do next is add a data flow, but I'm going to add a new data flow. So what I'll do is I will say, uh, go into the move and transform activities category again. This time I'm going to add a data flow. I'll do, I'm going to say create a new data flow. Just like in copy, I'm presented with the source and the sync. So let me take that folder out that came out of the previous step, that copy activity. And I'm also going to have my sync. So just like in copy activity, I can have a source and a sync as well. In this case, I'm going to sync this back to a database. Let's say it transforms the data. I'm going to put that back into a SQL table. So I'm going to do that. Now, in between is where a lot of the magic will happen and allow you to perform a lot of complex transformations on your data. We will a rich set of out-of-the-box transformations. And the most, one of the most common ones you're going to do is a derived column where you will be able to build expressions and perform functions on that data. So there's a full rich set of expression language functions available to you that will allow you to work with that data and transform it in many different ways. You can fully parameterize your data flows and you can create local variables inside of each of your data flows as well that you can reuse within your functions and your expressions over and over again. Now back on my design graph, you can see that I have the Dataflow debug session turned on, which allows me to connect directly into a Spark cluster while I'm working, so I can interactively work with the data and view it as I transform it. So if you go to Data Preview on your transformations, you'll be able to see a snapshot of the data that's in data frames as you are transforming the data. You can also highlight the columns and you can uh, perform statistical analysis on that data. And then as you're working, you can continue to add more transformations to your data flow and more expressions. So once you're done with that, you can go back to the pipeline and then you can direct the flow of processing and the workflow of your pipeline and execute this from the debug session. This is a design session that I'm working in here now and I can go ahead and debug directly from here and this will execute this pipeline from what's known as a sandbox run or a debug run. A triggered run is when I add a trigger and I execute this from a published version of the factory uh, because I'm, I'm currently designing this using my GitHub accounts. And so I can publish this to the live service and execute it that way. So the first thing that's going to happen is the copy activity is going to run. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that debug cluster that I was using for the data preview. And we're going to perform that transformation on the data. And this will land back into the SQL database when it is all finished. So that's a quick overview of how you can use data flows to transform data within Azure Factory.